Hi, I'm Scott Willis, National President of the APA, standing on the land of the Palawa people here in Tasmania. If you have read and are concerned by the recent newspaper story attacking hardworking and a caring physiotherapist in the residential aged care sector, you have every right to be. I am absolutely appalled by the report and an attack on my profession that has always been engaging, supportive, and always puts the patient first above anything else. Thank you to all the members who have reached out to us with support, advice, and offers of assistance. Your views are paramount to us. The media article's assertions attributed to the government are factually incorrect and disrespectful to our profession. The APA immediately responded strongly to this poorly cobbled together article when it was published and is continuing to do everything possible to correct the record. The APA has been in touch with Minister for Health and Aged Care Greg Hunt's office. They confirm the media story is incorrect and we have asked them to say this publicly. Minister Hunt's office also told us that the government is extremely supportive of the important role that physiotherapists and allied health more generally play in aged care. They claim that reforms in funding for aged care will deliver increased scope and funding for engagement of physiotherapists in residential and care at home and said there is to be a far greater focus on restorative care and that we will require physiotherapists to play an important role in this. On the 23rd of March, the Australian Aged Care Collaboration, which is made up of all the peak bodies representing the largest aged care providers, released its election statement. They are making three asks of the government, one of which is to introduce an allied health assessment tool and funding model. This is big news and an important breakthrough for our sector. And it is a direct result of the years of hard advocacy by the APA, our gerontology committee and members, and other engaged members and staff of the APA. Sensational headlines are yesterday's news. The stories how our work is paying dividends and gaining the support of the sector are what really counts to us. That said, I think it is important to be clear about how the recent media report story is so wrong and upsetting, especially to myself, who is the leader of this great profession. I'll always defend our profession as I believe we are essential and valuable to the consumer. It is no secret that it is the system that is at fault, not the dedicated physiotherapists who generally care for older people. We know they deliver the best care possible despite being set up to fail by the system itself. The prescriptive aged care funding instrument has restricted physiotherapy's broad scope of practice in residential aged care to pain management. Under items 4A and 4B of the ACFI guide, physiotherapists are required to deliver, to deliver massage or electrotherapy to residents once or four times a week. We know that this is narrow and ill-conceived system falls drastically short of the care that older people need in managing complex comorbidities and complex pain. We know that physiotherapists can provide aged care residents with a wide range of far more effective high quality therapies, including critical falls prevention programs to, be, to develop mobility, strength and balance maximising cognitive and physical well-being in people living with dementia, prevention and management of incontinence and chronic disease, and really addressing musculoskeletal issues. And the list goes on and on. There are better evidence-based approaches to pain management than massage and electrotherapy. So why do physios continue to deliver these sessions? because that's what the government has told them and the aged care providers to do. And because for older people, seeing their physiotherapist can be the highlight of their week, offering short-term relief to pain, loneliness and isolation. The APA has for many years advised government that the ACFI is woefully inadequate in addressing the complex needs of older people in residential aged care and the approaches that deliver long-term solutions are needed. And we told the Royal Commission into Aged Care Quality and Safety, as did many others. 
the Royal Commission found that there was lack of access to critical allied health services such as physiotherapy. It recommended the government ensure providers provide allied health services to residents in accordance with their individual care plans and that supports restorative and reablement care. It confirmed that needs-based funding for physiotherapy was required. The NAC, while an improvement to the ACFI, will not deliver that when implemented in October. The NAC does not provide for clinical care planning nor for associated allied health funding needs arising from that planning. There is widespread recognition across the sector that the government's response to the Royal Commission recommendations does not specifically address allied health planning. We are still waiting for a clearly articulated plan about how government will address the Royal Commission's recommendations. The APA has been working very hard behind the scenes to get clarity and advocate for needs-based physiotherapy funding. We have worked productively and openly with the department in working groups and other forums on the reform process. We have met with Minister Richard Colbeck twice, the opposition, the department, aged care providers, consumer groups and very much other stakeholders. We have distributed media releases and met with our healthcare profession peaks. We've hit back at the negative report via a media release and social media commentary. So please take the time to engage with those posts. Like them, share them, help us get the message out far and wide. We have a voice and it's time for you to all stand up and help me and the APA defend the profession's integrity and scope of practice. We have written an opinion piece for Crokey and sought a right of reply from the media outlet, outlet concerned and contacted the government and opposition. And the APA has left no stone unturned in our advocacy in a sector where stakeholder engagement and support, keeping people on side is key. And we are gaining traction and support across the sector as seen in the Australian Aged Care Collaborations Election Statement. There has been years and years of incredible advocacy from our members and the APA to ensure older people can access the physiotherapy they need in aged care. We won't stop being a thorn in the side of the decision makers until it happens. I will not stop advocating for my profession that I know does the right thing for the consumer and the health spend. So thank you, take care and stay safe.